for Jim Lakey over here at Sandyland Center, at the Shepherd Center. And uh, we serve the St. John and the Maxwell area, um, the county of Stafford. And you can go on the web and see us anytime at sandylandcenter.org. And um, come by and see us. And I say it every time, and it's really, it's really true. Come by for the best warm cup of coffee on a cold morning like this. It's just so warming. So do come by and see us. And today is Monday the 27th, and headlining the weather news this morning is the, seven, the massive 7.8 magnitude earthquake that rocked Nepal on Saturday, uh, killing nearly 4,000 people and injuring another 7,000 so far. And a hundred miles away from that area on Mount Everest, the wake caused avalanches that killed at least 18 people and injured dozens more. And several are still missing, making this the deadliest disaster in mountaineering, mountaineering on Mount Everest. A 6.7 aftershock hit, them, hit this morning and um, the nearly 100 um, earthquakes and aftershocks has crumbled the city of Kathmandu and is making rescue operations quite difficult. And here in the continental U.S., severe storms have, have ramped up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, spawning uh, large tornadoes that has caused damage, power outages, several thunderstorms, a large baseball-sized hail has also been reported. Because of this supercell associated with the tornadoes are moving slowly, this causes torrential rain and the threat of floods. So it seems like the global uh, notoriety of the weather, it is all over. And right now in the square in St. John, it says 51, but it really feels more like 41 because we have cloudy skies and the sun is not yet shining through. And today, from Monday the 27th, it will remain mostly cloudy with a high near 59, with a northeast wind at 16 to 21 miles per hour. And the humidity, the saturation is 47%, and we do have a 40% chance of some precipitation. And the pollen, um, it's down somewhat, and that's mainly coming from the trees. Tonight, it will be considerably cloudy, with a slight chance of rain, the low at 42, the winds north northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour, and the humidity at 64%. Tuesday tomorrow, it should be considerably cloudy also early, with some decrease in the, on the way during the day, and the high is at 67, with the winds north northeasterly again at 10 to 20 miles per hour, and the humidity at 47%. And tomorrow the, um, the pollen should come mostly from the trees, from the grass tomorrow, it should be coming from the grass. And tomorrow night, Tuesday night, we could expect clear skies with a few passing clouds, the low right at 41, and the winds north northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour, and the humidity at 59%. And Wednesday, it will be mostly sunny skies, the high near 71, the winds north northerly at 10 to 15 miles per hour, and the humidity at 46%. And on Wednesday night, it should be clear skies, with the winds south southeasterly at 5 to 10 miles per hour, and the humidity up again at 60% saturation. And for the weekend, looking forward to the weekend, Friday and Saturday um, seems to be pretty much the same with the Friday and Saturday highs at 78 to 80 on the park is sunny skies and the lows at 55, uh, the lows of 50s for um, Saturday. And on Sunday, we could expect to see the highs around about the low 80s 
and in the night time that she go down to about 50s. So quite a change in the temperature over the weekend. And our feature for today, I found this quite interesting. The headline says, Beat numbers are rebounding slowly. Along with the recent copious rainfall, this is good news for our local farmers in a report by Gay Rose in The Working Land. It is said that one sign that the rebound is in progress is a 2% increase in the number of livestock on the feedlots in Kansas from a year ago. Jim uh, Tenso, who is a professor at the Kansas State University, Caution us consumers, though, not to expect any changes in price, in the meat prices in the near future. This is because rebuilding of the Kansas beef herds is a long, slow process that will take time. First, you have to consider is the biologic lag time of 15 months from birth to market. Then there's the actual time it takes to find and build up the herds. Kansas went through a drought for almost three years, causing the pastures to dry up and reduction in feed production and causing producers to cut their herds or get rid of them altogether. But lots of farmers got rid of the livestock altogether. That resulted in a big drop in the supply and drove the price up for beef. Right now, demand is outstripping supply. The high price of this commodity is good news for the rancher and the farmer. Besides good prices, there has been good moisture in the Kansas, Texas, and Oklahoma um, ranching um, herding areas, and that will encourage herd expansion. Another factor is that although the supply is down, the quality of the meat has been improving. For the last couple of decades, um, the professor says, the consumer is paying more, but is also getting a better quality of meat. Kansas has a great cattle feeding program that draws cattle from all over the country, and that will help the supply. Uh, the professor also said um, it, he estimates that it will be between 2016 and 2017 before increasing herd numbers will impact the market and affect prices that we pay uh, as a consumer. So that's good news for us here and the farmers in Kansas. So mark your calendars now for some birthday anniversaries and com um, community events. Yesterday, um, Katie, Katie Regal, um, celebrated her twin, celebrated her birthday, and to, today is Sam Schrapp, and tomorrow is Gail Cornwell, and on Wednesday, the 29th, is Bill Astle, and on Thursday, it's Christy Weezer, and on Saturday, Jerry Hathaway. So do, if you see these people, send them a card, give them a call. I know they'd love to hear from you. Mark your calendars also for Wednesday. Do remember that the Sunflower Senior Center opens from 9.30 to 3.30 every Wednesday, and they have Rummy Cube. And mark your calendars also for April 30th through May 2nd, and that's because the Friends of the Ida Long Goodman Library are preparing for the annual book sale that will take place April the 30th through May the 2nd. And while you're decluttering for the summer, uh, for the spring, you can bring your videos and DVDs and set it aside for the library book sale. You can drop off your box discards at the library and you have the satisfaction of not only a tight job well done, but you get you can get a tax um, credit for that. So the preview sale is April 30th at 3 to 
3.30 to 6 and the admission is $1 for FOL members, Friends of the Library members, that is free. And on Friday, it May the 8th, from, on Friday, May the 1st, from 8 to 5, and on Saturday from 9 to 11, uh, they have the one band sale. So you can put all the books you want uh, and pack into a bag, and you can only pay a dollar for that. And uh, as situating some of the young people in our community, I just think they do a great job. We want to congratulate Jared Cuckerman. Jared Cuckerman of Maxwell High School is on his way to Washington, D.C. after scoring the highest in his category as a recent FCCLA competition. The FCCLA is the Family, Career and Community Leaders of America, whose mission is to promote growth and leadership, development uh, through family and consumer sciences education. Focusing on the multiple roles of family member, wage earner, and community leader, members develop skills for life through character development, creative and critical thinking, interpersonal communication, practical knowledge, and career preparation. The FCCLA is the only in-school student organization with the family as its core, with the family as its main focus, providing opportunities for active student participation at local, state, and indeed at the national levels. And Jared, for his project, he parted with the SAFE program, and that's the seatbelt stuff for everyone that the young people do in the school. He partnered with that program, and the KHP trooper, Jeff Schway, and the Stafford County EMS to present the risk of distraction and intoxication everywhere. And that's a ride program. And on Tuesday, that's tomorrow, he will have a mock crash scene presentation with the local law enforcement, the EMS, and the student participants. Jared also uh, participated in a table promotion that involves students making a meal sitting down with the family and talking about issues that involves alcohol and drug use. When he goes to Washington, D.C., he will have an opportunity to meet with the Kansas State Legislatures and advocate for the FCCLA organization, its programs in career and tech education and reducing alcohol use among teens. This is such a commendable effort on Jared's part, um, and we applaud him for his sense of responsibility. Congrats again to Jared, and if you see Jared, do uh, say something to him that will encourage him on this great on, on his great effort. Mark your calendars also for weekly menus over at Maxwell and St. John. Uh, today they're serving up some green beans and a turkey tetrazzini with bread, fruit cocktail and strawberries in Maxwell. And tomorrow they'll be serving up meatloaf, mashed potatoes, carrot, raisin salad and a cinnamon apple slices. And on Wednesday they will serve a chef salad with vegetables and bread and pineapple, and Thursday they will serve a salmon patty, or beef patty if you prefer, crab meat, and um, peas, and cream peas, tomatoes, and bread, and apricots, and they always, always have tea, coffee, and fixings that goes with the meal, and bread. <coughs> and over at the Sunflower Center, today they're serving um, chicken with potato and marinated tomatoes and apple crisp and cinnamon roll 
and they also have some applesauce available. And tomorrow they serve in meatballs with gravy and seasoned noodles, green beans, tossed green salad, chocolate uh, cake, and um, pears. And on Wednesday, they are serving um, oven fried um, uh, vegetables and a quiche and um, a blueberry muffin and some fruit cocktail and Thursday they're serving a tuna patches, seasoned rice, bread and butter and um, the fixings with puddings and it always makes me feel so hungry when I read the menu so if you need some help in getting a warm healthy meal well balanced meal don't forget to call them at either center and they'll be happy to prepare and um, have that delivered for you. And our thought for the day. A smile is a curve that will straighten out a lot of things. A smile is a curve that will straighten out many things. So keep on smiling and have a good afternoon. This is your story. This is your story. This is your story. This is my story. This is my story. This is my story. But most of all, this is the greatest story ever told. This is God's story. This is God's story. This is God's story. I know you're going to enjoy the incredible journey you're about to embark on. The story is brimming over with tales of mystery, intrigue, adventure, of love, heartbreak, and triumph, of power, of struggle, and finally, of redemption. But remember, the Bible is not a hundred ancient, unrelated paintings, but a mural all knitted together to tell the story of God's great love for us and the extent to which He will go to get us back. I know you're really going to enjoy and appreciate this wonderful experience as you fully explore how we all fit into the greatest story ever told, God's story. This is God's story. This is God's story. This is God's story. pastor of First Southern Baptist Church here in St. John on the corner of Second and Exchange. We would like to invite you to come and join with us as we look at God's story, the story of God's interaction with man. We'll begin on September the 7th at 9.30 a.m. with, with a worship service followed by at 10.30 with Sunday School. This is a study for everyone in the family, all of the children, Young people, adults, will be studying the same lesson so that we can talk about it at home as we go through the week. We invite you again to come and join us on this 31-week study of God's story and man's story.